I can't see anything particularly obvious about this door that makes me worried. I'm going to chance it and go in. If you're looking for things that, that would give give away that something's happened, something's been here. The wire there, maybe? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what's fishing wire going to get used for? As a trip wire, perhaps, for yeah. detonating something here? Exactly, yeah. Oh. What have I done? When you set off a PIR, so you uh, did, realistically. If you look down there, mm -hmm. is a passive infrared sensor. Ah, the red. Yeah. yeah, the red glowing thing. But then if you look, you see the wire, and it's attached to that, that motor at the back. And what would that have done to me if that had gone off? That probably, yeah, would have been made, made your day, really. And we've now moved into the main area within the, the building that we've mocked up for, for training purposes. Well, I've tr triggered something. What is that exactly, this thing? It's crush wire. To activate the crush wire, you would tread on, tread on. this bead bit That's here, bead. but as the wire deteriorates there over time... Potential. Yeah, for, for the actual connection to be made there as well. I still can't see anything obviously suspicious in this room, but it's extremely... Oh! That was that. That was that. One oh. thing that's suspicious in this room, and you've just tried it. <laughs> Some of these things are very hard to see. How do you possibly... Work? How long does it take you to... This so, could take this could To take. clear a room of this size, given that there's so many small objects to, to look for. This, this could take you hours. You'd go around the room, along the floor, and you'd, you'd, you'd section it off, you'd go around, you get to, and I'll be honest, you, you get to this, you look, and if you look around here... I can see some wire there. Yep. Very, I mean, ba barely visible. Yeah, oh. The important bit was looking... Oh, sorry, right, yeah, I hadn't even spotted that. If you look under behind the cistern here, there's a mortar sitting in behind the cistern. Oh, dear. Yeah. This device is called a weight dropper. It's used to open doors that are thought to have booby traps behind them. The cord here is pulled, and that then lets this weighted device here, this plate, come down and give the door an almighty thump. And if there is anything behind it, the people who have pulled the cord will be 50 yards, 50 meters back. And so if there is an explosion, no one will get hurt. How easy is it when you're clearing a place like this, just somehow to, uh, you know, to, to make a mistake? to forget to look at a particular section or to... Why we, we, when we train the, tra train the team, there's a set sequence that they go through to make sure floor, middle of the ceiling. So they go through it and you make sure that the whole of the floor is done. And they will meticulously move around the, the building. And they'll cut, go around and then cut through the centre. So it is literally sort of fingertip searching yeah, yeah. with this, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah but depending on it, you've got a battery pack up there, this, this what you've just trod on. Another room we've got set up. You have refugees coming off, off the field, what, you, what would be good for you to take? I might be interested in the, the canister of gas, for example. I'd want to maybe disconnect it from here. Oh, yep. Yeah. Right. You've got to be able to accept the fact that it could go bang and you, you, you do that. And that's why you want to try and do everything from the safe distances that you need to, from your, your 100 meters or your 50 meters whatever is the safest distance away from pulling things. And that's why whenever the teams come in, anything that we require to pull, anything that we require to move, is pulled remotely from a distance with, with as I say, the tools we've got set up and everything in place. Simple clothes peg on a wire. There's a trip wire comes from there, through the line at the top, connected by a simple peg. Pull the trip wire out, and that's us. And roughly how many houses do you think there are to be searched? in the area that uh, ISIS has been laying booby traps. So you're talking thousands and thousands that still need to be searched in, in villages that are still empty because the people are in the refugee camps. Is there a risk that people no longer want to be in the refugee camps and are going to return home before they... Uh, that's, that's always a risk yeah. and that, that does happen. We have to follow a routine and order that we're given and, and, and uh, so it becomes very difficult. What you notice from going around this house is just how hard it is to see any of the devices a few of them, if you look really carefully, you might see a piece of very, very thin wire occasionally, but a lot of them are uh, crush wires hidden under pieces of linoleum. And really, unless you're an absolute expert searching every section of the house centimetre by centimetre, I don't think there's any way as an ordinary civilian you would see any of these things whatsoever. Um, you could probably even read 
lots of mine safety education leaflets and still not see any of these things. You might see the odd telltale sign, but a lot of these things are hidden beyond the eyes of anybody but an expert. I've got two more rooms. Have a look in the kitchen. Well, the first thing that I'm slightly suspicious of is the, uh, the floor. It's clearly got the crack in it and fresh earth there. There's a this crack the kind of running there. Plus also there's a, what yeah. looks like a, a cooking pot um, uh, come bomb device exactly. just around the corner so, here. Cooking pots is a favourite one, devices. I mean, uh, this, this particular one, it's got a pressure switch, but the pressure switch on this one is pressure release. It's underneath, so as you lift up, it goes. It would all be covered. There would be, there would be nothing that you could have seen. Anything that is a container, that can hold explosive can be booby trapped with a switch and with something that, that can assist it. It takes hours and hours just to search a single room in some of these houses and it can take yes. a whole day or two to search one house, months and months to search a complete village and there are hundreds if not thousands of villages in and around northern Iraq that are full of these ISIS booby traps so the search work could potentially go on for years.